You kind of go into how really, you know, in that first basted fitting, you can almost change anything. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's all, that's the beauty of it is it's a blank canvas at that first fitting. And, you know, we as men, we have a hard time uh, envisioning things off of just a square. You know what I mean? I mean, I know I do. We look yeah. at that and we go, you know, I don't know. Like that could be anything. Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and today I'm very excited to have bespoke tailor Eric Jensen joining us from New York. Hey, Eric, it's so great to see you again, and uh, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to join us. Yeah, thank you, Kirby. I wish uh, I wish we could be together and shake hands right now, but uh, you know, really looking forward to coming to Dallas and seeing you again soon. But thanks so yeah. much for having me on. Absolutely. Well, I'm wearing your beautiful suit right here. Uh, the seasons are turning. It's a, a perfect time for fresco right now. So I've got my beautiful kind of charcoal fresco suit on. And I have to say it is uh, fastly becoming one of my favorites, especially with this fresco fabric that you chose. I mean, it's like, what, eight, what, 11 or 13 ounces, something insane? Yeah, it's 13 ounce. Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's uh, one amazing. of the heavier weights for fresco, but... Um... But yeah, I, I love the way it feels. I love the way it wears and drapes and uh, that's a great cloth. Absolutely. And I'm wearing it, uh, you know, with my braces today. So um, anyway, I'm uh, I'm feeling great, you know, in this uh, literal suit of armor right here. So uh, anyway, it's very exciting. Um, an Italian um, suit of armor. An Italian suit of armor. So um, it really, it, it fits great. I get a lot of compliments on it. So thank you. And, um, but speaking about that, I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on is I know that you made a, a very exciting announcement on Instagram a few days ago. Uh, and so I just wanted to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about that and, and tell us more. So I don't want to steal the thunder from you, but, uh, you know, what ex what's, what's new, Eric? <laughs> well, yeah, as you alluded to, we did. We made a fantastic announcement. It's been something we've been working on for probably the last eight months um and uh, the incredible thing well first of all we have uh combined sartre and jensen with uh sartre gallo and for those who don't know sartre gallo in rome is my master tailor's uh sartoria or tailor shop and it's where i trained uh when i was a little ragazzino uh when i was a young man uh 25. yeah so i trained there when i was young and and under him and then after that you know spent some time in chicago and then some time on my own and and we were able to get together to the point where we could merge our two companies sartoria jensen sartoria gallo into one uh the one name and uh i thought you know that it would be a fantastic thing to bring the gallo name to the us because it's it's a really huge name in rome uh they've done work for both pope uh, john paul and for Pope Papa Benedicto, Pope Benedict. Um, so we've made their papal garments. Uh, they have, um, they've worked under the Prince of Dua Sicilia, which is the Prince of Sicily in Italy. Uh, so they're, they're a really big tailoring house in Rome. And they're not well known here in the US, you know, aside from, you know, the small amount of students that do get to go and, and enjoy time at the school there, like me. Uh, we bring back the Gallo name, but for the most part, they're not known here. Um, so it's been a really great opportunity and an honor to be, you know, partnered with them. And and now to create Sartoria Gallo New York, which is um, which is our new company. That's, that's really exciting. I mean, to, um, you know, it's got to be a little, uh, I mean, just surreal to, you know, kind of have come full circle in your journey as a bespoke tailor. You know, now joining you know, the actual family that helped train you as a bespoke tailor, you know, over 10 years ago. Yeah, it's uh, it's an honor. It's, it really is. And it's something that um, I feel quite blessed to be a part of. It's edifying, too. You know, um, it's always something that's really incredible to be seen by those who taught you as, you know, a real legitimate master tailor. You know, uh, you can call yourself a master tailor all you want, but when the hands that trained you calls you a master tailor and, you know, kind of embraces you into their fold. It's really, really edifying at the work that I've been doing and, and that has been going on here in New York for the past uh, two yeah. and a half years. So. so help me understand what exactly this means. So, I mean, will you still be cutting garments yourself in New York or are you just taking measurements and then sending them to Italy and they're cutting there? I mean, how is this kind of practically going to play out? For the most part, nothing changes, especially for clients of mine who have been with me for the past six, seven months. Um, because what I had been doing up until this point in order to catch up with demand is utilizing the talents of the Gallo tailors. Um, so what I would do is I would take the measurements of the clients, 
get the cloth in, strike out the pattern, cut the pattern, and then get it ready for the fittings. And then I would perform the fittings here in New York. And once I was satisfied and the client was satisfied after one or two fittings, then I would send it to Rome and Rome, the tailors there would make it in the same exact tan tradition that I was trained and I had been making here in New York and then send it back almost completed, not fully completed, mm -hmm. uh, where we would perform the final fitting. And then I would do the final uh, work that would need to be done in order to deliver the coat or the, or the trousers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so nothing's changed for in that regard uh, with here with status quo here in New York. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, this isn't a new, this isn't a made to measure operation and there's no dumbing down of the craftsmanship. It's just yeah. uh, a methodology in which we're able to, to produce in a timely manner for clients, you know, because yeah. prior yeah, prior to this, we were, we had a pretty long backlog for, for, waiting yeah. for a, well, prior to this, I mean, the, the distinction was, is that, I mean, you were literally doing a hundred percent of the work yourself. And, yes. and you know, anyone that has studied tailoring, and I had the privilege of actually doing my own suit jacket in college under a tailor. I mean, it's it's absolutely mind blowing the amount of time and work that it goes in to the construction of just a jacket. That's not even considering the trousers. I mean, how many hours would you say you were putting in to the completion of a jacket like what I'm wearing today? I mean, base, you're looking at at least 40 hours of work for just the jacket, but that's not that's not including cutting. That's not including um, uh, reshaping the coat and adjusting the coat and making sure that it's ready for fittings. You know, that's 40 hours is just going into the making of the coat from piece of cloth to finished product. Um, so, yeah, so that that alone was 40 hours. Then you'd add the trousers into that, which was another usually about 12 hours. Um, yeah. And that's, again, not incorporating, cutting, uh, fitting getting adjusting, you know, things like that. So yeah, it, it was daunting. <laughs> I mean, that's 40 actual hours, right? So, I mean, very few of us are able to sit and actually work, you know, a eight hour or 10 hour straight day. So, I mean, thinking about it just in terms of days, I mean, it's two weeks to make a jacket. Yeah, definitely. Yep. And, and that's, yeah, like you said, it's not including all the business aspects of things yeah. that go into owning the business as well. Yeah. So. Meeting with clients. So you'll still be, you know, taking the measurements, you know, striking the pattern. So you still have that custodianship uh, uh, over kind of the, the process that is what allows, you know, really, you know, this high bespoke or this true uh, incarnation of bespoke where the cutter, uh, uh, the tailor, the bespoke tailor uh, is actually the one taking your measurements, cutting your pattern, doing the fittings. And instead of sending it like downstairs or upstairs to the workshop, you're simply just mailing it to Rome. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, it's all, I mean, the whole process was was designed to be that way. And that was the thing that was very um, essential for both myself and Marco Gallo, who is the son of Luigi Gallo, who now we, we work in tandem together, mostly being that Luigi is upwards in, in his age. Um, and so that was the thing that both Marco and I, you know, really wanted to make sure is that we kept that bespoke tradition as much alive as humanly possible, even though we're on, you know, separate sides of the ocean. Um, and so, you know, to be able to keep hands on as the tailor, having hands on it and making the pattern and striking it out and doing the fittings and making sure that that whole process remained. Um, and yeah, like you said, the only difference is instead of it going to a tailor, you know, downstairs, it's going to a tailor uh, just across the water. But yeah. those hands are the those hands are the hands that trained me. You know what I mean? And so yeah. the product is not changing. The system is not changing. The entirety of the suit isn't changing. So yeah. that mentality is still there. And I guess what's exciting though, is it'll also allow you to do more or to really reach more customers in, in the form that, you know, before, I mean, you probably were capped out at, you know, 12 or 15 suits a year. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I mean, that's there's so many more people that would love to have you make something, especially in a style that isn't widely accessible here in the United States. I mean, you know, you've got Huntsman in New York, but that's a very British suit. Uh, and then, you know, the Parisian tailors, I mean, they might travel to the United States, not much. You've got some of the Northern Italy ones that come. You've got the Neapolitan ones that come. But there's really, I mean, nobody that I know of from Rome that really travels here regularly. No, nor I. I mean, to, to be honest, there and there's a great amount of uh, talent in Rome and in the old guard that are still making suits there. 
but as yeah. for them actually traveling here to the U.S., uh, not very often. And that's why I get a lot of people that don't understand the Roman style of suit. Like I have a lot of people ask me, what, what is the Roman style of suit? And my closest way to be able to describe it is it's Napoleon, but done really clean to the degree that a Milanese suit or Firenze suit would be. So there's softness and there's drape, uh, but there's a lot of attention to detail in regards to the finishings and in, gar in regards to how the entire suit um, is, is laid out. So, you know, that's my best description of a Roman suit. Um, and for the most part, I try to say that we're Napoleon because we have a lot of characteristics of a Napoleon suit. But at the same time, us being Roman, I feel like we pay a lot more attention to the finishing work and to the overall aesthetic of the suit. So yeah. there's uncleanliness, but there's clean cleanliness. Yeah, and there is a big difference between those regional styles. I mean, especially in Italy. Exactly. It's almost like if you equate it to like how many different um, accents there are in the United States. That's, that's as many different types of tailoring uh, methodologies that there are in Italy. So, you know. Absolutely. Well, that's really exciting. So uh, this just launched. And um, I mean, when are you uh, going to be traveling again? Do you know, I mean, how soon you'll be able to be meeting with uh, customers? Yeah. So we're actually going to be traveling at the end of this month. We're going to be going to uh, Chicago, March 25th and 26th. We'll be in Dallas, March 28th and 29th. And then we'll be in San Diego, LA area from March 31st to April uh, 2nd, April 3rd, depending on the responses. Well, that's exciting. I can't wait to, to see you back in Dallas. And, um, you know, we spoke a little bit before this, this call about possibly doing another piece together. And I know that you met with uh, Zach at Dorme. Um, of course, everyone's familiar with Dorme. They do absolutely exceptional fabrics based in France, but the majority of their stuff is milled uh, in England. You guys were going to come up with a recommendation. And so this is the this is the uh, the big reveal here of what we're going to be working on next. Yeah. So Zach and I, we did a good conversation. We talked a lot about, um, you know, we watch you often and are making sure that we, you know, see what you're wearing, see how you're wearing it, how you feel comfortable. And I know that you and I, when we first spoke about, you know, this piece that we made for you, you how you tended towards grays and that you you felt more comfortable when you wore them. You had a better affinity towards pairing them because um, mm -hmm. I know that sometimes. Um, with you, you sometimes worry about how you pair things. And so for you, it's easier if you can, you know, figure out a way that you can pair this quick and easy and, and you know, get to work because you, you work hard. And so uh, as Zach and I spoke about that and taking into account the Dallas weather, and I noticed that you only have one pinstripe suit in a blue, you know, so which is which is a great suit. It's a beautiful suit. But you you love gray. So I figured I'd play the devil's advocate on that and I'd give you a gray <laughs> Uh, pinstripe for you. Oh, exciting. Um, what's beautiful though about the cloth, so it's uh, more of a lighter weight, so it's going to be good for Dallas. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but it is a gray with a hint of greenish to it. Mm. So it's not a green, um, yeah. but but it's a gray that has this little small hint of, of green when it reads, when you read it in the sun and, and if, it, if, it, if it shows right. Um, for mm -hmm. the majority of the time, it's going to look gray. Um, but Every so often, you're going to pick up this background of a little hint, hint or tint of green to that gray. Um, and that's the really beautiful thing about it, because a lot of grays have like a blue uh, tones to it. There's like a they're like blue grays. Yeah. This is really beautiful because it's like a green gray. Well, we actually had a video on, on uh, I think it was matching socks to trousers or something. But one of the things we explained about on that video was the fact that there are a bunch of different grays. You know, there's blue gray, there's green gray. I mean, I don't know. There's like a black gray? I mean, how many different grays would you say there are? I mean, you know, the gray isn't just gray. Yes, exactly. And then you've got the shades of gray where it goes down to heather gray, to charcoal gray, to a gunmetal gray, you know, things like that. Um, you know, that's the thing that people don't understand. It's the same thing with blues. It's why I'm attracted to blues a lot as well is because my eye finds pleasure in those gradients of blues, um, mm -hmm. you know, because a blue is not a blue. You know, there's there's various gradients and the th same thing with grays, um, you know, and, and how they read and how they catch sunlight is going to determine, you know, kind of how they how they feel and how they look to the client. Um, but yeah, so this is I think it's going to be a great cloth for you. It's a lighter weight as well. So you're looking at about nine, nine and a half ounce, which 
which back in the day we would say, oh, that's spring, summer. But nowadays, because of indoor heating and the way that we travel. Yeah, it's four season almost. Yeah, it's definitely more more four seasons, especially in Dallas. You're going to get four seasons out of it. Uh, as long as you guys don't get another snowstorm. <laughs> yeah. So the only um, thing would be, you know, just speaking about how do you want it to, uh, to be set up for you, you know, like yeah. how. Well, that's an interesting question <clears throat> that I kind of wanted to go into next. And I mean, I think one of the greatest pleasures of working with a bespoke tailor, a true master tailor like yourself, is it's almost like going to the doctor or working with an artist. Uh, you know, I almost hesitate uh, to provide too much input because I really want to allow your artistic talent and experience to really manifest kind of naturally through the suit. So, I mean, seeing this cloth, I mean, where's your first impression of where you would take that? Um, you know, for me, I, I think I'd, I'd keep it rather simple uh, to a degree. Um, I would do no flaps on the pockets. When I think of no flaps on a pocket, I, I have two, I have clients that look at me in two different ways when I say this. Um, some clients look at me and go, well, that's going to make it look very formal because we all think that uh, bism pockets is equated with a tuxedo for the most part. Um, whereas me and, and living through an Italian, you know, kind of lifestyle and, and the Italian lens that I view most suits, I see no pockets as uh, no flaps on the pockets as very um, laissez faire, kind of very, you know, relaxed and, and, mm. and, uh, un, and, simple, you know, a simplified suit, simplified look. Um, and so for that reason, I really like them because with a cloth like this, you could almost look a little too formal. And I never, mm -hmm. I, I never want my suits to look too formal, um, mm -hmm. you know, as best as I can. Uh, so for me, no flaps is kind of very relaxed looking to the suit. Um, you know, we could go in that direction or you could go in a further in the direction in which you wanted to more formalize the cloth. And so you put yep. flaps on and maybe even peak lapels, you know, yep. something in that, in that vein uh, with a single button. And I know that, I think I know that you are not a big fan of that. Uh, well, you know, I'm not a big fan of peak lapels on just a, on a kind of a daytime suit. So I probably would go with the notch lapels. Uh, and then what about a button, you know, would you do a three roll two or a single button? How would you uh, play with the buttons in order to really kind of embrace the cloth. I think you, it would be a, fa a great, a great way to uh, simple, not simplify the suit, but to relax the suit. Uh, if you do it a three roll two and you did bism pockets on the, on the, on the pockets uh, with no flaps, I think that would be great. I would do definitely a single, single pleat for you. If you want, yeah. you could delve into a double pleat. I love the simplicity of just a single pleat, especially worn with braces is just uh, beautiful. Yeah, that crispness is is gorgeous, and and, yeah. and it wears well on you from the trousers you're wearing now. I yeah. remember when we cut those. So yeah, that's that's kind of the direction I would go with you. Um, you know, uh, depending yeah. on. But the other thing is, when we do our first fitting, I always tell my clients this: we can have all these ideas in our head, um, but when we do the first fitting, the cloth is really going to lead us in a direction that that's, that's going to seem. Um, uh, palpable you know what i mean like yeah. we, we can decide oh this jacket needs this this jacket needs that and then you put the cloth on the body and you see how it drapes and how it wears and how mm -hmm. it goes with who you are and that that could redetermine the entire shape and aspect of that suit yeah so best laid plans of mice and men <laughs> yeah and that's one of the beautiful things about the bespoke process is that you know you're not going you know from swatch to finish uh you know one you can see the cloth i mean you've got the entire bolt right there uh, and then, you know, you can see it basted up. And as you've said in some of our previous videos, which if you're watching and haven't seen our other videos with Eric Jensen, you know, by all means, you know, to check the description of this video or kind of click the link to his playlist. Uh, but uh, you kind of go into how really, you know, in that first basted fitting, you can almost change anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's all, that's the beauty of it is it's a blank canvas at that first fitting. And, you know, we as men, we have a hard time uh, envisioning things off of just a square. You know what I mean? I mean, I know I do. We look yeah. at that and we go, you know, I don't know. Like that could be anything. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, when you actually see the garment, you know, on your body, then you can actually start making these informed decisions because, you know, it, it, it becomes a reality for us. And, and once it becomes a reality, then we as men, we can kind of go, okay, that makes sense. Like, why would I put a patch pocket on this cloth? You know, or, or yeah. why wouldn't I put a patch pocket? So, yeah. you know, it's that, it's that kind of system. So I always tell my clients, you know, I'm going to cut for this. And then, you know, after our first fitting, we'll finalize those details. 
Yeah. Um, but, but for you, yeah, I would cut in a notch lapel. I think a three roll two would kind of be interesting, an interesting uh, take on the suit. Um, I, I don't know you, if you're hundred percent for it, but I'm going to cut for our bism pockets. We're going to think in that, in that direction. And then mm-hmm. if we're, if you feel like you'd feel more comfortable with the flaps, that's not a difficult add on, you know what I mean? It's not a difficult place to start going. Yeah. Um, and then we'll do single pleat, single pleat reverse. Um, and then we can start talking about, you know, pockets, um, for your interior, and, and for your trousers at that point. So you'll be able to uh, have it basted and, you know, cut and basted by the time you get here? Yeah, yeah, we'll have it cut and basted uh, fitting for you. You know, we already have your pattern on file. Um, so we're going to make the make sure we do the necessary adjustments, you know, that we did when we first delivered your suit, uh, this suit that you're wearing. So we'll adjust that on your pattern and then make sure that, that that's all squared away. I'll strike it out, get it ready for a fitting. We should have it uh, there for you by the 26th, I believe. Well, that's exciting. It's so great after, you know, really not seeing any tailors for so long to be finally able to embark on a new uh, new tailoring project. It's been quite the desert for me uh, over the last few months. And so it's uh, I'm so thrilled to see that you're able to start traveling again, uh, of course, safely and uh, visiting some clients. And um, if someone's interested in getting more information about your schedule uh, or how uh, or would like to get in contact with you about scheduling an appointment, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so the best way is going to be via email. We have a new email address now. It's going to be New York at SartoriaGallo.com. And then the other way is you can always DM us through uh, Instagram. You can see us at our handle at Sartoria.Gallo.NYC. And then always you can check us out on the web at www.SartoriaGallo.com. Work in progress, but it's up and we're very, very happy about it. So, uh, so be free to check that out. You can also look at the history of the Sartoria Gallo family on that page and see, you know, all we've been established since 1950s. You can look at all the history and then everything that we've done in our past decades. That's uh, super exciting, Eric. Congratulations. And I, it's, um, you know, now there are, are two kind of bespoke cutting rooms, you know, uh, you know, based in New York now. And it's great to see kind of that bespoke tailoring industry, you know, really take hold. Uh, and that actual kind of master bespoke tailors are able to be kind of cutting uh, in New York and sending their work back to the the workrooms to be made up in the same authentic tradition of proper Italian tailoring. And um, that's that's really uh, quite exciting. Yeah, we're, we're very excited, very excited to be the first uh, Italian bespoke tailoring house to have an actual permanent location in the United States. So yeah. it's quite a, quite a thrill. Well, Eric, hey, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And um, anyway, look forward to seeing you here in Dallas and best of luck with the, the new venture. Thank you. Always a pleasure. So there we are, Eric Jensen. Very exciting to kind of see this new wave of tailoring tradition really kind of taking hold here in the United States. Of course, Huntsman, uh, the first uh, kind of overseas bespoke tailoring house to open a a permanent cutting room in New York. Uh, And now we have Satoria Gallo from Italy uh, doing the same. Uh, So if you've, you know, kind of been interested in kind of the Italian tailoring tradition, uh, what better way uh, than to to commission uh, a suit from someone uh, here based in the United States, but still backed up uh, with the decades of history and tradition of a firm like Satorio Gallo. So if you like this video, give us the thumbs up. Any questions for Eric, ask them in the comment section below. Uh, Otherwise, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching.